In this video, we're going to look at graphing equilibrium. So what does the establishment of equilibrium look like on a graph? And then we'll go through an example of how to find KEQ if you are given a graph of equilibrium. We're going to examine the establishment of equilibrium on a graph for uh, a very common equilibrium process we'll study, the Haber process. So in the Haber process, one mole of nitrogen gas and three moles of hydrogen gas are in equilibrium with two moles of ammonia gas. So I'm just going to quickly color code our um, reactants and products. So nitrogen is going to be represented by a pink line on our graph. Hydrogen is going to be represented by a blue line on our graph. And ammonia will be represented by a green line on our graph. So we're going to assume that we start out with equimolar concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen. So equimolar means the same concentration. All right, so on our graph, uh, we might start with nitrogen here. Uh, what's gonna happen as nitrogen starts to react is that over time, the concentration of nitrogen begins to decrease. So we're gonna see nitrogen decrease and then level off over time. And the reason that we see this leveling off is initially we start with a really high concentration of our reactant. So it's going to have a very fast rate. So the change in concentration over time will be fast. As we start to use up some of that reactant, uh, the rate of the reaction is going to slow down. And so the change in concentration over time is going to level out. Next, we're going to look at the change in hydrogen. So we start with the same concentration. Um, and what we need to do to examine the change is to look at the coefficients in front of each of these species. So the coefficient in front of nitrogen is 1, and the coefficient in front of hydrogen is 3. What that means is that on our graph, the concentration of hydrogen is going to change by three times the concentration of nitrogen. So as we start to draw this on our graph, uh, what we can see is that uh, nitrogen experienced a basically three squared drop in concentration. And so hydrogen's concentration in the same time should experience a nine squared drop. So the change in concentration is three times as great for hydrogen as it is for nitrogen. All right, so we have our reactants. Now we're going to switch to our products. So first off, we can look at the coefficient for nitrogen, it, or sorry, for ammonia. It's a 2, so it's going to experience a 2 times uh, concentration increase, um, or concentration increase twice as much as of that of nitrogen. Um, but because we only started with reactants, as this reaction proceeds, the concentration of ammonia will increase. And so we're going to start at 0 for our ammonia concentration. And then we're going to increase. So over the same time period, ammonia should go up by six squares. And we see that it does. So the change in ammonia concentration is twice that of nitrogen. All right, so we can tell when equilibrium has been established on a graph by when our concentration curves flatten out. So on this graph, this dotted line shows us when equilibrium is established. And we can recognize because there is no change in concentration over time. We're now going to look at um, 
calculating the equilibrium constant from a graph of equilibrium. So uh, we're going to examine the uh, dimerization of nitrogen dioxide. So we have nitrogen dioxide. This is a brown gas. And then we have dinitrogen tetraoxide, which is a colorless gas. So on our graph, we're going to represent uh, NO2 as a pink line and N2O4 as a purple line. So imagine we fill a flask just with nitrogen dioxide, and we'll start at uh, 1.2 moles per liter. Um, at equilibrium, the concentration of uh, nitrogen dioxide is going to be 0 0.6 moles per liter. And so I'm going to make that established at 6 seconds. And so over that time, we're going to see a sharp decrease and then kind of a flattening out with equilibrium at 0 0.6 moles per liter. Um, because the coefficient in front of nitrogen dioxide is a 2, it's going to change at twice the rate of dinitrogen tetraoxide, which has a coefficient of 1. So if dinitrogen tetraoxide starts at 0, it's only going to reach a concentration of 0 0.3, so half as much of a change in the same time period. And so we're going to see the slow establishment of dinitrogen tetraoxide and then the leveling out. And so we have equilibrium being established. And we can use any point where the lines are flat to calculate this K value. Um, so our K is always equal to the concentration of our product, which is dinitrogen tetraoxide divided by the concentration of our reactants, which is nitrogen dioxide. And we're going to square that because of the coefficient of 2. So we're going to plug in our numbers now. And these are molar concentrations. So if we read off of our graph, the concentration of, dinitrogen, or of nitrogen dioxide is 0.6. And of dinitrogen tetraoxide is 0.3. So if we plug those in, we get 0 0.3 moles per liter divided by 0 0.6 moles per liter, and then the denominator will be squared. And that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.83, and that 3 is going to be repeating. As a reminder, our K value is unitless. So it doesn't matter that our units in our math don't actually cancel out our K value is going to be unitless. Because our K value is uh, quite small, it's less than 1, we can state that this equilibrium position is reactant favored.